All his life he was told that without a quirk he couldn't be a hero. He started to believe in what everyone told him after being unable to defend himself against those who had quirk that were great for combat, but that all changed months ago. After training with Sun Goku in martial arts and the art of ki, Izuku was now ready to prove all those that doubted him wrong. Izuku Midoriya was now standing in front of the high school that helped train some of the greatest superheroes that protect the peace of today. This is it. This where I can finally see if all my hard work paid off, thought the young quirkless teen. Izuku had pushed himself hard in order to achieve the strength he currently possessed. Strength that could defeat a low threat villain like the sludge villain, a mugger that was strong enough to defeat Katsuki, and withstand a full power blow of Katsuki's quirk as well. Izuku once thought that he could never possess such power, but thanks to Gaku he could now use that strength to be a hero. Shove. Wah. Izuku was pushed to the ground and fell on his knees while his hands were then planted on the ground to held up the rest of his body. Don't get in my way, D.E.K.U. Izuku looked up to see the back of an all too familiar hothead. Katsuki stomped away and into the building. That jerk still hasn't learned, even after everything that's happening. After Izuku stood up to Katsuki in front of the schoolyard at their middle school, the blonde had surprisingly stopped bothering Izuku for some reason. Most people thought that since Izuku could now take a explosion from Katsuki with his quirk and come out harmed the blonde decided it was pointless to continue to assault him and just gave up. But that didn't change the fact that Katsuki was still a bully and that he despised Izuku for hiding his secret quirks, if he recent action is anything to go by. Are you alright? asked a female voice at Izuku. The green-haired teen looked up to see a girl was offering her right hand to up him up. Izuku started at the girl for a moment as this was the first time a girl ever willingly talked to him. She had fair skin with her cheeks blushing, big round brown eyes and shoulder-length brown hair that's bobbed and curved inwards at the ends, two longer clumps taking the same shape on each side of her face. For clothing, she was wearing a brown coat, pink scarf, and black leggings. Izuku quickly shook his head and accepted the girl's hand as she pulled him up, Thanks, I appreciate that. What's that guy's deal with pushing you? Someone who's looking to be a hero shouldn't do something like that, she said while looking at the front door of the school that Katsuki disappeared into. He and I have a very bad history with each other. He hates my guts and thinks that he can push others around because how strong he is signed Izuku. A hero shouldn't think like that. That's the mindset of a villain if you ask me, said the girl. I just hope he gets a wake-up call sooner or later. By the way, thanks again for helping me up smiled Izuku. The girl smiled in response, no problem, I'm Okako Yurika. Izuku. Izuku Midoriya. Good luck on the exam, Midoriya wished Okako as she walked off into the building. Izuku smiled for a moment as she her disappeared from his sight. He haven't even taken the exam to get into school and he already made a new friend. But something that he didn't notice finally started to enter his mind, I I I I T T talked to a a girl. A slash N, unlike in canon, he actually did talk this time. All of the participants were seated inside of the auditorium of UA waiting for the exam to be explained to them. Hey there, UA candidates, called out the voice of President Mike, one of the teachers and pro heroes here at UA. He was a tall, slender man with long spiky blonde hair and a small mustache. He wore a pair of headphones with the word Hage written on the headband and a pair of sunglasses. Welcome to today's big performance. Everybody say hey, he said and he put one of his hands next to his ear to hear them all say hey, but all he got in return was silence. President Mike was surprisingly alright with that, that's cool, my UA listeners. I'm here to explain the guidelines for the practical portion of the exam. Are you ready? He sang the last part, but was once again met with silence. President Mike? He's so cool. I can't believe he's a teacher here at UA. He did come here during his high school years, so I guess he might feel like UA is a part of him mumbled Izuku at how cool it was that a pro hero that came to UA was now a staff member. 
Shut it, ya yeah, nerd. Why are you even next to me anyway, growled Katsuki. Unfortunately, Izuku wasn't fast enough to get an open seat in another row, so he had to take the only available seat left that was next to Katsuki. The green-haired teen just shot the blonde a small glare. Here's how the test is going to go. You'll each be assigned a testing ground where you'll be given a letter from A to G. Once this presentation is over, you'll head to the bus with the letter that's on your sheet and be taken to your testing ground. All the participants looked at the sheets that were in front of them and looked at which testing ground they were going to be located at. Katsuki looked at his sheet and then took a look at Izuku's to see that the two of them had different testing ground locations, I guess that makes sense, it's so kids from the same middle school can't work together and create alliances he said. Izuku couldn't help but agree, having students who could help each other could prove to be beneficial for the examines, so Yue wants to put us in a tough spot in order to see what we can accomplish on our own. Izuku started to mumble again. Zip it. Nerd. This just means that you'll get to live another day, Deku warned Katsuki. Even after everything that happened during the last few months, he still hasn't changed a bit. The TV screen behind President Mike changed to show a 3D model of a city. Then three robotic figures appeared around a model city with different numbers beside them. Each testing ground is filled with robots that'll act as villains. Your goal here is to try and destroy as many robots as you can in order to gain points. Some robots have more points than others, so destroy as many as you can to add up your overall score. But you're only allowed to attack the robots, and not other participants. No playing the anti-hero. Explained President Mike. Of course that's the case. It won't be right to attack someone else when they're busy with the exam, I know that I won't want to be attacked while I'm busy doing my best on the exam. Izuku started mumbling again. Katsuki's fist was shaking very fast and was very close to punching Izuku to get him to stop. A student a few rows in front of Izuku and Katsuki stood up and raised his hand. He looked to be a tall and muscular young man with black hair and wore rectangular half-rim glasses, Excuse me, sir. May I ask a question, he asked. Sure thing. What's on your mind, replied President Mike. There appears to be no fewer than four villain robots on this handout, while there are only three on the screen. An error like this, if it is one, is highly unbefitting of UA, Japan's top hero academy. Good eye, examinee 7111. The fourth variation of the villain robots is worth zero points. He's more of an obstacle than an opponent to face. There's just one of them in each testing ground, informed President Mike. The student who asked the question bowed in appreciation, thank you for answering my question, sir. However, he wasn't done. He turned around and looked up at Izuku, and you, the one that's making so much noise. That's distracting and very unprofessional for someone who wishes to be here. If you're going to keep distracting the rest of us then leave. Izuku gulped and looked down in shame. Not even in the exam yet and somebody else besides Katsuki already thinks he's unfit to be here. Why do these things always happen to him? Well, that's all from me. I'll leave my listeners with our school motto, plus ultra. Break a leg out there everyone. President Mike told the participants. Izuku looked up from his seat and got up. Ready for the moment that he had been training the last ten months for. One bus ride later. Wow, look at that. It looks just like a real city. That thing must have cost millions of dollars to make. And there's more than one of them. UA is amazing. Those were the comments of many of the participants that were getting off the bus that brought them towards the mock city that their exam was going to be taking place. Izuku was the last person to exit the bus and looked up to see that the mock city was surrounded by a huge wall that had a pair of gates in front of them. He looked determined on how he was going to give it his all and see if his training with Gaku paid off. Izuku was outfitted with a light blue workout suit, he felt like it was enough to avoid too much attention. 
he looked around at the other participants and suddenly spotted Okako preparing for the exam by doing a few breathing exercises. Izuku smiled a bit as there was someone that he knew that was nice, to an extent. He decided to walk over to wish her a bit of luck on the exam. But he didn't get far as a hand grabbed his shoulder to stop him from going any further. He looked over his shoulder and saw the same examinee that called him out for making too much noise back at the auditorium. He looked over and saw the Izuku had intended to walk towards Okako. She looks like she's trying to concentrate on the exam. Do you intend distract as well to make her fail, he said coldly. Izuku was a bit nervous by his voice, but his training with Gaku had helped him raise his confidence in himself a bit, I just wanted to wish her good luck. I didn't mean to distract anyone in the auditorium, I just got a bit too excited for the exam. You must think that this is some kind of game. That this exam is just for fun and that anyone can enter it so easily replied the examinee as he folded her arms over his chest. What gave you that impression? Only people who really want to be in UA are here and they all know that they needed to work hard in order to get this far. I know that I worked hard to be here since I'm even here in the first place, replied Izuku. He really didn't know what this guy's problem was. The two of them didn't notice that their little argument had caught the attention of a few other participants. A lot of them looked like very big and tough muscular guys with powerful quirk, others didn't look so intimidating, but had confident smirks on their faces. They all looked at Izuku and were unimpressed as he looked like a wimp in their eyes and didn't belong here where they were about to enter battle. Izuku looked at the guy that was belittling him and gave a slight smirk, I may not be the most intimidating guy around, but I'm not to be underestimated. I'm more than meets the eye. And, begin. Everyone was surprised by the sound of President Mick's voice appearing out of nowhere and started to look around to see where it came from. What are waiting for? Go. Get moving. There are no countdowns in real life battles. That immediately got everyone's attention as they started to rush through the open gates to enter the mock city. Izuku ended up behind everyone, but that wouldn't be the case for long. His legs started to glow a bit yellow with red veins appearing around them, which ended up boosting the strength of his legs. With the stilt leg sweep technique activated on both his legs, he ran as fast as he could and passed the other participants that were ahead of him with super speed. He saw the first robot in sight and picked up the pace in order to get to the robot faster. He then leaped into the air and used a side kick to take the robot's head off. He then landed on his feet and ran off to find more robots to destroy. The other participants saw what Izuku did to the robot and were shocked to see that the scrawny green-haired kid that they all underestimated was indeed more than meets the eye, just like he said. With Izuku. The green-haired quirkless teen was in front of another robot that looked ready to attack, but he jump used the big fist blower to uppercut the bot and earn more points. Izuku then started running again to search for more robots. He was using the stilt leg sweep to help enhance his leg power to give himself a speed boost so that he could find robots faster. Maybe if I get to higher ground, then I could find more robots quicker he theorizes. Izuku spotted the closest building that has the lowest roof and used the power of the key in his legs to jump up as high as he could in order to reach the roof. He managed to land on the roof of the building and started running to the next building to jump on its roof. He continued to do jump from roof to roof in order to find the right viewpoint, until he stopped on top of one of the buildings and looked down in between it and the building he came from to see two robots on each side of the alleyway. Seeing an opportunity, he created a key blast in each of his hands and fired them at the two robots from above. The resulting explosion earned Izuku more points and a smile on his face. He turned around and started to look around from on top of the building he was currently standing on in order to see if he could find any more robots out in the mock city. As he looked around he spotted another robot that was down in the street below him. He couldn't see anyone else attacking the robot, so he took the opportunity to fire another key blast from one of his hands and destroyed the robot. I'll need to keep searching if I'm to get more points. I can't just wait for a robot to show up not when there are so many other people trying to destroy them, he said. 
Without wasting any more time, Izuku used stilled leg sweep on his legs again and rush off the building by jumping towards the next one. He continued to jump across the buildings until he spotted more robots that weren't attacking other participants and leaped towards them in order to earn more points. He landed on top of one robot and smashed it with the force of his landing, then he shot another key blast towards the next robot. After that, he leaped towards another robot and used the big fist blower in order to punch it and destroy it. This is actually kind of fun, chuckled Izuku. He then started to run off again to find more robots to fight, but he wouldn't have to look far as he was soon confronted by a total of five robots that started to approach him. Eat this. Key Blast. Izuku held out both his arms and started firing multiple yellow spheres at the robots over and over again. The blast ended up creating an explosion that further damaged the robots and destroyed them completely, earning Izuku more points. I probably should stop using the key blast so much to avoid running out of energy, he then ran off to find more robots. Inside an observation room. A bunch of teachers slash pro heroes were watching the exam through a set of multiple TV screens that helped them see as many students as possible from the multiple testing grounds. We have a lot of good candidates this year, that's for sure. They all seem to be very skilled with using their quirks in combat. But they're also at a big disadvantage with not knowing how many villain robots there are, or their locations. Add in the fact that they have a limited amount of time and they have quite a few odds stacked against them. While that is indeed true, they are showing to use their quirks in very clever ways in order to find the robot villains. One TV screen showed an examinee that had wing-like arms standing on top of a building. Some use information gathering. The next TV screen showed the examinee that confronted Izuku earlier. Others use speed to get ahead of their peers. The next screen showed a boy blasting a robot from a laser that was on his belt. Another advantage is being calm while under pressure. Another screen show Katsuki standing on top of a pile of robots he destroyed. As well as having sheer power and combat abilities. Another screen showed Izuku using the big fist blower to punch a robot repeatedly until he fell over. But some of the most effective heroes have a combination of all those traits. This year's set of students looks very promising, that's for sure. There's still plenty of time before the exam is over. But the real test has yet to come, so let's see how they'll react. One of the teacher's hands pushed a big red button. Back at the Mock City. Smash. Bam. Clang. Izuku was punching one robot over and over again to make sure that it stayed down. It was the toughest one that he faced so far and it wasn't going down easy, but after enough hits the robot was down for the count. Man. That thing was no walk in the park, signed Izuku as he took a moment to catch his breath. The exam was nearly over and he had about 16 points. Most of the robots that he fought had just one point with a two-point robot showing up from time to time, the last robot that he just destroyed was the first one he faced that was worth three points, but 16 was way too lower for him to make it into UA. He needed more points and fast. Stomp. The ground started to shake a bit and Izuku tired to find his balance, but that wasn't the end of the shaking. Stomp. 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 The ground kept on shaking while the noise of its source was getting louder and louder. Everyone was wondering what could be causing the shaking, but they all looked up and saw their answer with absolute terror. It was a colossal green robot that made the ones they they've been fighting look like ants in comparison in size. Let's get out of here. Move it. I'm out of here. One by one. The examines started to run away from the giant robot that began to follow them at a very slow pace, which only motivated them to get away faster. I need to get out of here and find more robots to fight. Izuku was about to turn tail and run just like all the other examines. Ah. Uh. But then, he heard a voice that sounded a bit familiar to him. He turned around and saw that Okako was in the way of the giant robot as her foot was trapped under a bit of rubble. The examinee that had given Izuku a hard time ran past him, but then looked and saw that he was staring at Okako who was trapped. 
Izuku knew what he had to do. Upon instinct, he used stilt leg sweep to rush over to Okako and made it to her in about 4 seconds flat. He then held out his left hand towards the rubble that had trapped Okako's leg and started to use one of the key techniques that Gaku had taught him. The rubble started to float in the air, before it landed beside Okako, bit by bit it kept on floating off her leg until she was free. This move was telekinesis. It allows the user to move things by using both key and the mind. The user needs to learn how to manipulate the key of an object without touching it, then they use their mind to move the object that they're manipulating any way they desire, but need to concentrate to do so, or else they'll fail to move the object. Izuku only knows how to move small things and still needs a bit more training to get to a more advanced level, but he was able to remove the rubble from Okako, which was good enough for now. Akko looked at her leg that was trapped under the rubble and then looked at Izuku, why your quirk is dash. No time. Hurry. Izuku interrupted her. He picked her up bride style and used stilt leg sweep to run away from the giant robot while carrying her in his arms. The key in his legs being enhanced allowed them both to make it to where the other examines all gathered. He put her down gently and then turned around to see that the giant robot was still making its way towards them. The robot even reached out and tried to grab someone with its right hand. I'm beating it. Don't touch me. Ah. The examines all started to run away again, but to their surprise, Izuku was running towards the robot. What are you doing? Someone yelled out to him. Izuku turned his head to answer, making sure IT doesn't hurt anyone. That answer confused everyone that heard him. What could he do against a robot of that size? Izuku stopped running and looked up to see that the robot's right hand was reaching to grab him. He knew of a way to both stopping it, and stop the robot from advancing further towards the other examines. He cupped his hands together and put them to the side of his body, Kami. The other participants watched at what Izuku was doing, Heami. The robot's hand was about 5 meters away from grabbing Izuku. Izuku thrust out his cupped hand and fired a Kamehameha straight towards the robot's hand. The blue beam of key collided with the palm of the robot's opened hand and pushed it back a bit, halting its advancement on the team. The power behind the beam started to push the hand back a bit, but the robot started to use more power and push back against the beam. Izuku started to get a bit nervous that it the Kamehameha wasn't working and that the robot's hand was getting closer. But he remembered that Gaku told him keeping a calm mind helps with controlling one's key. So he closed his eyes, and began to breathe a bit in order to calm himself. My fear means nothing, my fear means nothing, my fear means, nothing he thought to himself. With his mind being a bit more relaxed, that meant that he could control his key a bit better which resulted in the Kamehameha growing a bit bigger and pushed back the robot's hand. The added power was also enough to push the hand back even further than where it was before. This kind of power was enough for the hand to be pushed up all the way back until the whole arm was destroyed. The giant robot had now lost its right arm. The force that was behind the beam was also enough to push the whole robot back slightly until it lost its balance and started to tip over. Crash. With its balance lost, the giant robot fell onto its back and made a huge crash sound that forced anyone that heard it to cover their ears in pain due to the volume of the noise. Time's up, called out President Mick's voice over the speaker system. With the exam now over, the participants took time to look at the giant robot that was now down on its back and it didn't even look like it was trying to get up. Maybe with the exam over, it wasn't needed anymore? However, their eyes soon turned to the one responsible for tipping that big thing over. The kid that a lot of them underestimated before the exam even started had proved to be more than meets the eye. Izuku was now on his knees after launching his most powerful Kamehameha yet in order to overpower the giant robot. His arms were tired after holding the bin up for so long and using so much key in order to push back the big bot, but only one thing sat in his mind, only 16 points. He knew that 16 was low and unlikely to be enough for passing, but there was nothing he could do about it now. 
he just had to hope that 16 really was enough for him to pass. The examines all looked at Izuku with shock of how he was able to not only tip a giant robot onto its back, but also destroy an arm in the process. Can you believe what he did? I don't think I've ever seen that kind of power before. He destroyed its arm and made it fall over. What kind of quirk has that much power? Wait a minute. I think he looks somewhat familiar if you ask me. I think I've seen the stance he was in before he fired that wind blast at the robot. I think I know who he is. He's the kid that saved another kid from the sludge villain months again. Hey, you're right. He used the same move on the robot that he used on the sludge villain. Holy smoke. This guy is strong. The examines all praised Izuku for his accomplishment on destroying the giant robot, but he didn't focus on that, he was more focused on the face that he only got 16 points. The examinee that Izuku had been at odds with before the exam stared at him from behind. He was a bit frustrated, but not for the reasons one might think at first. The more he listened to the other examines talk about how Izuku took down the robot, the more he realized that they didn't understand. He looked at Okako and remembered how Izuku saved her and got her to safety before taking out the giant robot. The other examines must have saw it too, but were completely ignoring it. Izuku had saved someone else from harm at the cost of his own time of trying to find more points. The examinee realized that he misjudged Izuku more than he thought. Excellent work, everyone called out a voice to the examines. They all turned around and saw an elder woman walking past them. She was short and had gray hair tied in a bun with a syringe loop through it. She was wearing a doctor's lab coat with yellow and red vest-like designs on each side, two yellow buttons, and had a pink belt on. She was also wearing pink boots and had helmet on her head with a visor on. She also had a cane that looked like a syringe as well. Izuku recognized her as the pro hero. Recovery girl. Why you re, recovery girl, said Izuku. Indeed I am, Sunny. Need any healing, she asked. No, I'm fine. But she could use some healing, her leg was crushed under some rubble he said pointing at Okako as she blushed a bit. Nothing I can't fix, she walked over to Okako and, kissed her leg. It turned out that Recovery Girl's quirk allows her to heal others by kissing them on the injury. Makes you wonder how popular she must have been with other heroes back in her younger years. Once she kissed Okako's leg, it was then surrounded by a green aura that showed her quirk was working, you should be fine, dear. The brown-haired girl got up on her legs and they both felt fine, wow, it feels all better. Thank you, she said. It's what I do smiled recovery girl. Okako them turned to Izuku, and thank you for saving me, Midoriya. Izuku smiled in return, I was happy to help. With the exam now over, there wasn't really a reason for the examines to stick around, so Izuku started walking away. He walked past the crowd with a depressed frown on his face, still doubting that he scored enough points to pass. But after the tough day he had today, he just wanted to go home. One week later. A week has passed since the entrance exam and Izuku still hadn't heard from Yue yet. He was getting concerned that he failed, but thanks to some meditation, his worries started to fade into the background. He was in the living room and was meditating on the couch with his legs crossed. Inko watched her son as he seemed so calm and free of worry when he was like that. She kept on thinking about how blessed he was that he ran into Gaku that day and that the man offered to train her son in the art of combat and using ki to become a hero. She was surprised to hear that Gaku himself was quirkless, yet could use his ki to do things that make it look like he had more than one quirk. She felt a bit disappointed in herself for not supporting Izuku in his dream to become a hero while a random stranger did more for him in 10 months than what she did in 10 years. She was eternally grateful to Gaku for what he did for Izuku and hopes to find some way to thank him. The last time he was here, he said that she could repay him with food, which was an odd choice from her perspective. Izuku opened his eyes and got off the couch, that always seems to get rid of any troubles I have. 
Wish I've learned about meditation years ago he said. Better late than, honey smiled Inka. The green-haired teen returned his mother's smile with one of his own. He then walked off towards his room to rest for a bit. Once he got to his room he sat down on his bed and looked at posters of his favorite hero, All Might. Izuku had idolized the man since childhood and was determined to become the next number one hero just like he was. But once he learned that he couldn't develop a quirk, his dream seemed a lot more impossible. Until Gaku showed up and teach him martial arts and ki, which were available to him despite being quirklies. After how well he fought off the robots at the entrance exam it proved that he really could be a hero without a quirk, so the meant he could still become the next number one hero in the future if he trained hard enough. Izuku looked around his room and spotted something that he remembered was also an important part of his childhood. He got up from the bed and walked over to a self that had a collection of action figures of his favorite heroes, both real and fictional. He looked at a red and blue toy truck, or more specifically, a Freightliner Co. 1980. He picked it up and started to turn some of its parts around until it took on a different form and he now held the L.E. Izuku. It's here, called out his mother. The sudden sound of her scream scared him a bit and made him jump slightly. He carefully put the toy back on the shelf and turned around to see his mother enter his room with a letter in her hands. Your letter from Yue. It's here, she said. Izuku quickly walked over to his mom and had her hand him the letter. He looked at it and couldn't believe that it was actually here in his hands. Mom, can I be along so that I can look at it, he asked. As sure thing, sweetie she replied and walked out of the door while closing the door. Izuku was now all on his own in his room, he was ready to see if his hard work with Gaku had actually paid off in the end. He walked over towards his desk and sat down on the char so he could open the letter. However, instead of a piece of paper falling out of the envelope, out came a small device that was about the size of a potato chip. W what is this? asked the green haired boy as he looked at it and then touched the top of the device until it suddenly lit up and the top showed a hologram with a very famous hero appearing on the screen. I am here as a hologram to deliver you your results said the booming voice of All Might as he appeared on the hologram. What the All Might? What's he doing giving me my results? Izuku asked himself in his mind. Greetings, young Midoriya, you're probably wondering why I, the symbol of peace, am giving you your test results on your entrance exam performance. That's because I'm now part of UA teaching staff and I'm going to be a teacher to many students this year, which may include you, said the holographic All Might. Izuku was beyond thrilled to hear what he just heard. All Might, the symbol of peace slash number one hero, his idol, was going to be a teacher at U.A. This was one of the most exciting things he ever heard. He might even get a chance to learn under him if he passes, but did he pass? All right, on to the results. You did very well on the written test and managed to pass but the practical exam has an interesting way of grading the examines, and your results are the most interesting. Izuku was confused on what All Might meant by that. You scored about 16 villain points on the exam, which is quite low to be honest and wouldn't be enough to pass. Explained All Might. Izuku was hit with a wave of disappointment and pity in himself. Even after all the work that he had done, all the training Gaku had given him, and all the time he spent improving himself to get better, it still wasn't enough to work. He failed. He failed just like the failure he was always told he was by his peers. If there won't other factors involved in the exam, which is the case as there are other factors, said All Might. That sentence ended up catching Izuku's attention, which halted his negative thoughts. In order for you to understand what I mean, Check out this short video clip of your performance. All Might pointed towards the screen behind him and took out a TV remote in order to push a button on it. A video of Izuku's rescue of Okako played a he picked her up and ran away from the giant robot. The clip also showed him firing the Kamehameha at the robot's hand to keep it at bay from grabbing him, and how he managed to take off one of its arms and send it falling over. 
you used what little time you had left to save another examinee from harm. Someone what you're supposed to be completion against and saved her. That is what being a hero is truly about, helping others, no matter what the consequences your actions will have on you. How can a hero course reject someone who is committed to helping others? For that, we have rescue points. Rescue points are earned by helping others during the exam, even though they are your competition. For your bravery and selflessness, Izuka Midoriya, you earned 60 rescue points to go along with your 16 villain points, explained All Might in a cheerful tone. Izuka's heart was now pounding with excitement and joy at what he just heard. Him saving another examinee earned him more point which was enough to pass. A chart then appeared on the hologram to show the top five participants that scored the highest number of points on the exam. Izukus couldn't believe that his name was among the top five. Katsuki Bakugo, villain points, 77 plus rescue points, 0 equals 77 points. Izuka Midoriya, villain points, 16 plus rescue points, 60 equals 76 points. Ajiro Kiri's Hima, Villain points, 39 plus rescue points, 35 equals 74 points. Okako Uraruka, villain points, 28 plus rescue points, 45 equals 73 points. Ibarashi Ozaki, villain points, 36 plus rescue points, 32 equals 68 points. Second place. Him, the quirkless kid who only had 10 months to learn, control, and improve his new power got second place on the exam. This was too unreal to believe. Izuku's eyes started to leak tears of joy as he actually managed to pass the UA Entrenace exam and is now an official student at the best hero school in Japan. You passed. Welcome, young Midoriya, for this is your hero academy. We look forward to seeing what you can do. Those were All Might's last words before he disappeared along with the hologram message ending. Outside of Izuka's room, Inko was pacing back and forth nervously as she waited for her son to give her the news. After what seemed like an eternity, the door to her son's room opened and he looked at her with a smile, I got in mom. I did it, he said. Inko smiled with a few tears leaking out of her eyes as she hugged her son in pure joy, Oh, Izuku. Words cannot describe just how proud I am of you. You overcame your limitation of being quirkless and proved that you can be a hero. You're my little hero. Izuka returned to hug. Thanks, Mom. I couldn't have done it without you or Gaku supporting me. Inko's joy had decreased slightly as she really didn't do much to help her son out, it was mostly the work of Gaku, a stranger, that believed in her son more than her. Someone mentioned my name. Ah, screamed the mother and son peer in shock at the new voice. They both turned around and saw Gaku leaning against the wall with a cheerful smile on his face. Do you ever call before you teleport like that? asked Izuku. Would you prefer I appeared in the bathroom or one of the bedrooms? asked Gaku. Izuku thought about it for a moment before answering, no, that would be worse. Well don't worry about that happening giggled the spiky haired man. So, what are you doing here, Gaku, asked Inko. Isn't it obvious, I'm here to congratulate Izuku for making it into you. A, smiled the black haired adult. You heard I made it in, asked the teenager. I've been here for the last two minutes replied Gaku. Inko wondered how she didn't notice him if he had really been there for that long. Perhaps it was her own anxiety that prevented her from noticing. Izuku walked up to Gaku and hugged him, Thank you, Gaku. Thank up for training me these past ten months and helping me be strong enough to take the exam. Thank you for putting so much time into helping me. Gaku laughed and ruffled Izuku's hair once he let go of the hug, No problem, kid. But I also have another reason for being here besides seeing if you go into UA. Really? What is it? asked Izuku. Gaku looked at Inko for a moment and asked, I need to borrow him for a moment. It should only take an hour at most, is that all right? 
Inko thought about it for a moment and decided that Gaku was probably going to ask her son to help him with something, I'm guess I'm alright with it, just as long as he comes home before it gets too dark she said. Don't worry, I said an hour at most replied Gaku. He then turned to Izuku and said, you should probably change into someone more comfortable for outside. Izuku nodded and went into his room to change. It took about five minutes, but he came out wearing his blue workout uniform that he wore during the entrance exam. Gaku walked over to his student and placed a hand on his shoulder before turned to look at Inko, we're just heading to the beach, we'll be back soon. He then used instant transmission to teleport the two of them out of the living room. Inko what still finding it hard to believe that Gaku doesn't require a quirk to do that? Maybe I should ask him more about this key stuff, she wondered. Dagaba Beach The master and student duo appeared on the sandy beach that had served as their training area for nearly a year. Where they both grew more than just their muscles, but also their minds as well. It was getting close to sunset and the sky was a bright orange as the water and sand looked as clean as a whistle. The two of them really had done a fantastic job of tidying this place up, which meant that more people had ended up coming to enjoy the beach after all the trash mysteriously disappeared. A slash N, wonder why no one ever walked past the beach from the streets above and saw Izuka cleaning up the beach or questioned it in the canon series. We sure did put this place to good use. Didn't we, kid? asked Gaku as he stared out into the ocean water. Yeah, you taught me so much here and helped me a lot. I'm forever grateful for that, Gaku replied Izuku with a smile. Now for the reason I brought you here. Now that you're in UA, we need to know how strong our time training together has made you compared to when we started out. There's only one way to find out for sure just how much you've improved said Gaku in a serious tone of voice. How exactly? asked Izuku. He felt a bit uneasy Gaku's serious tone of voice. Gaku then replaced his serious face with a cheerful happy one, we going to fight. Izuku was left shocked by what he just heard, what, 